Hi, it's Dom from Lived Health. I'm here with Professor Gavin Giovannoni. Yeah, I'm Gavin Giovannoni, also known as Prof G, and I'm from Bath's in the London School of Medicine and Dentistry in East London. If I turn up and I'm brand newly diagnosed, I say to you, what are the advantages and disadvantages of high efficacy therapy? I've read so much on the internet. What would you say to me? Well, I think the first thing for an individual is to make sure they understand multiple sclerosis. People have to appreciate the the impact the MS can have, not only in the short term, but in the long term. Then you move on to the DMTs, and you can uh, explain to them about this maintenance escalation versus flipping the pyramid high efficacy. And the overwhelming uh, data is, in terms of an average effect, the people on high efficacy therapies early do so much better. You know, it keeps them employed, it keeps their disability levels low, it protects cognition, it protects brain volume. I mean, the arguments, I think, are overwhelming. That doesn't mean to say the low or middle efficacy therapies don't work. The problem is you don't know that until you put people on them and you monitor them. And what will happen is the people that fail them will move on to high efficacy. What you get left behind with is this group of people that are, are, are responders. You are gambling with your brain and your spinal cord by going with this maintenance escalation strategy. But some people are really, really risk averse and they don't want the monitoring, the potential complications of the high efficacy therapies up front and it takes time to get to that target uh, place. And that doesn't mean it doesn't going to work, it just means you lose a bit of the benefits of the, or the advantage of the high efficacy therapy because the sooner you use them the better. I had a friend and she's got a couple of kids and she just said, I'm looking at this and I'm front loading the risk. And she went straight into the high efficacy, in this case stem cells, but bang, straight away did that because she figures that as risky as it is, compared against the long term risks, it's better. But one more question, Gavin. Where do you see things in 10 years? We're going to be combination therapies because right. we know that we have to have an anti inflammatory at the base, and then on top of that, we're going to have potential neuroprotective and revitalization. Right. Maybe even, you know, maybe neuro restorative therapies. Right. But we're also going to be targeting brain health. You know, people will be proactively engaged in uh, lifestyle management, preventing comorbidities. I think we're missing a trick there. The impact of comorbidities and lifestyle things on MS is enormous. So exercise, sleep, diet, all these kind of things which aren't as sexy but are as necessary. We just don't do them properly in right. clinic because we don't have enough time. Right. You know, and I just wish our healthcare system would pay for those lifestyle interventions. And that is preventative healthcare, mm -hmm. even in the MS population. Yeah. Can we optimize wellness, uh, general health, impacts on the brain. Gavin, that's brilliant. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Lived Health will be bringing you on-the-day highlights from Europe's biggest annual MS conference, Ectrims 2022. Make sure you're subscribed so that you don't miss out on the latest updates in MS treatment from across the globe.